If nothing else, the pandemic has made us all think, really think about the lives we lead. California. It made Sammy Potter realize a couple of things. Uh, the first was um, that I really wanted to go on the show Survivor because I was like locked inside of my house and I had nothing to do. So I just watched like every episode of that ever. And it's an amazing show. It's incredible. Let's get to today's immunity challenge. First okay, that was one thing. The other insight was brought on by this strange year he had at college, taking classes online and learning remotely. It made me realize I really want to push beyond the norms of just going to school and getting a job, because um, I think there's more to life than that. Sammy read a book about what's called the calendar year triple crown, that is hiking the Appalachian Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, and the Pacific Crest Trail in one calendar year. That's a total of more than 7,000 miles on America's three epic trails. And from the moment I heard those words, I was like absolutely obsessed with the idea of doing it myself. It is an enormous physical, mental, and emotional challenge because to cover 8,000 miles on these three trails in 365 days means that you have to do about 22 miles a day every single day of the year, right? Yeah, so we're actually planning to do it in just over nine months. Um, if you do the math there, it amounts to about 30 miles every day. Um, and my big constraint is I really would like to go back to school in September, um, at the end of September in the fall. Joining Sammy Potter in this undertaking is Jackson Perel, a friend and classmate at Stanford University. Their goal? To start on the Appalachian Trail on the first day of 2021 and proceed north, completing that trek by late March or early April. If all goes well, you'll finish up the Appalachian Trail in Maine uh, at the end of March. As you know, there are a lot of people in Maine and New Hampshire who know the parts of the trail in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine really well. I think that they're going to find it somewhat astounding that your intent is to come through the Green Mountains, the White Mountains, the mountains of Maine in March during wintertime. What is your plan there? If the snowpack is super intense, you know, if it's 30 inches, if it's 40 inches, uh, you don't want to be post holing um, all day because, you know, you just can't do as many miles that way. So we may have to change trails in, over to the Continental Divide Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail before coming back later in the year uh, to finish that section. Since you're going to be hiking in the winter, you're going to need more gear, you're going to need more clothing. How much is your pack going to weigh? So I just waited actually about 15 minutes ago and my base weight, base weight meaning everything uh, except for, uh, you know, food, gas, water um, is currently around 19 pounds. Um, so it's a lot smaller than I think most people would expect. I'm by no means like an ultralight hiker. Um, you know, I like to carry a stove. I like to carry a tent instead of a tarp because I like to be comfortable. Um, but you want to keep that pack weight down below like 35 or 30 pounds if possible. What do you think is going to be the most challenging part of what you're setting out to do? The one that's most on, on my mind right now uh, would probably be foot health, actually. Uh, we've done a ton of training, uh, you know, with, with large packs in order to get our feet and our legs used to that. Um, but foot health can like derail any trek of any kind. You know, if you get a massive blister, it's just unbearable to like walk on a massive blister for a long period of time. Um, I've done it before and like, it's not something I, I hope to do again, but it's very possible. People who are not familiar with what goes into this kind of long distance hiking may not be aware of the preparation that's required. How many boxes of food are, are, are going to be sent to you over the course of the three hikes if things go roughly according to schedule? Yeah, so the Appalachian Trail, you don't need to send any mail uh, resupplies because, you know, there's plenty of places to buy food along the way. Uh, the other two, I think we have a combined number of about 100 days of, um, of resupply food. Um, I actually have one right here if you want me to show you a few, a few yeah. of the things that are in it. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, some homemade trail mix that we got. For breakfast, we're typically going to eat oatmeal and raisins. I know it doesn't look very appetizing right now, but... You know, this will look really good when it, it is rehydrated with some water. And then for uh, most of our dinners, we just got like uh, dehydrated mashed potatoes, rice and beans, uh, that kind of thing. So it's like really simple dehydrated food. Um, but when you're out on the trail, you just want to get as many calories as you can in order to, you know, keep yourself going. There are going to be days out there when the going is really, really bad. And you're going to really have to have a lot of grit, a lot of moxie to keep going. What do you think you're going to be able to tap into? 
when you really need it to keep soldiering on? Yeah, that's a really good question. I love that you use the word moxie there because um, it makes me think of Maine. And, you know, growing up in Maine, I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned is moxie and how to keep a really positive attitude in the, in the case of, you know, huge adversity. On the trail, as you said, there will be like days that are difficult. It's also possible that there will be like entire weeks that are super difficult. Um, and for me, you know, I, I'm lucky to have like a really good, a really good solid upbringing that I'm able to, you know, look back on and understand what it takes to get through, to get through some difficult times as well as, uh, you know, know that I have a family supporting me back home um, and also just lean in and really enjoy that experience. You know, I'm super grateful for the difficulty that we'll be having out there because it makes the vistas, it makes the summits, um, and it makes the tops of mountains like so much sweeter.